In the first section, we learned how to build the basic foundations and structure of our application. We will now move on to the first pieces of real functionality. The most common first step in an enterprise application is usually to identify the user. First, we need to create a model to represent the user in the system, which will need to be stored on both the front end and the back end. A good way to do this is with the Sench command utility we use to create the application. From the base directory of our application, we can use the censure generate command to create a model representing a user. We'll give the row an integer ID for joins, and use the user's email address as a unique login name. We also need a field for the password. Let's add a couple of name fields, and a language field for use later. Note that the format here is a comma-separated list of field, colon, type, pairs. All these fields are just strings. We will need a number of different types later. This creates a model in the models folder in a file called user.js. Let's take a look at this. You can see that it's created an X class inheriting from the x.data.model class with the fields that we specified. Managing users one at a time is often inconvenient, so we also need to create a group model which can group these users together. We want to be able to see all the users associated with the group, so let's add a one to many association to the group model. First specify the full model name, including the namespace, but also give the association a name to make it easier to use later. Then specify the key in the user object which links it to this group. Let's also create a reverse belongs to association in the user object so that we can easily get back to the group that the user belongs to. Note that in this example we've decided that a user can only belong to one group. Some systems use a many-to-many -many relationship between users and groups which requires a different set of associations and an intermediate model to link the two together. Now we have a means of grouping users together, and XJS will automatically create methods on each model instance to access the relevant instance from the other model. For example, user.group will return the correct linked group without us needing to write any further code. When the models are ready, we need to put some rules around the sort of data they will accept. It is a good idea to push validation down into the models so it is as close to the data as possible. So let's add some rules to the user object. We do this by adding a validations member. First, let's ensure that all the relevant fields are present in our model and that they are of a sensible length that will fit into our database. We also want to ensure that the email address is valid. Next, we test that the password matches our complexity rules. This will need a custom validation function. Let's call it custom password. Add this as a custom validator to the x.data.validations list. This needs to be done as part of our application's init function before the model can use it, so let's put some code in our app.js. We've now got a good client-side data layer for our users and groups.